There's a story in the New Testament about a good shepherd who leaves the flock to go after one lost sheep. It's a story often used to demonstrate the love of God, how far he would go to pursue us when we wander off. But Jesus didn't share this story so we could feel good about being pursued by him. He shared it to defend his ministry and call the church to action. Jesus was associating with people who were considered outcasts from the church community, people of the world, and the leadership of the day was questioning his methods. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Tax collectors and sinners gathered around Jesus to hear his teaching. This gathering was not taking place in church. Jesus went to where the people were. He is the good shepherd who pursued lost sheep who wandered off. He went to the places wandering people go. If we are to be followers of Jesus, should we not do the same? For many years in America, Christianity provided a foundation for society. Even people who didn't go to church at least shared some common values with Christians. So we built a method of doing church for that culture. We buried churches in pretty neighborhoods or found inexpensive properties, built nice buildings, developed programs, operated good organizations according to esteemed leadership principles, and expected people to be attracted to the church and come on their own. For a while it worked, it seemed. We challenged young people to pursue the call of God into ministry. They responded who were trained to do church well, and it seemed the church was healthy. But America has changed. The numbers have changed, and somehow we are not in the place we once were. The stats show a rapid decline in people who identify as Christ followers. Let's say a church of 200 in a town of 2,000 has maintained a steady attendance. They might consider themselves healthy and reaching the community because they are stable and 10% of the community attends. The people love each other and the seats are full in their modest facility, at least for the one Sunday service they offer. But time has had its way on their facility. It's getting tired, but that's okay because it's home for these folks. After all, they say, it's just a church, our church. Yet, time. In time, their community has grown from 2,000 to 20,000, making this church's attendance now only 1% of the community. In that time, there are no new churches. In fact, some have closed. None of the existing churches have grown, and life in the church community seems the same while the world around them has changed so much change. The dirty word in the church world. But let's go there. Let's talk about change. Over time, the attitudes in our hypothetical church have changed. They don't like all the new people coming into town. They aren't from here. They don't belong. Our taxes have gone up and these people are worldly, they complain. They are building houses in the fields and forests that were once our backyard view. The streets are busy. The buses come here now. The homeless have arrived. Our town isn't what it used to be. We don't like that, but at least we can protect our church from change. It's nice if the pastor wants to go after one, but let's make sure he doesn't go after 99. That would upset the power structure and how we do things. We can control the one. We'll be the 99 to stay here and protect the place. Yet, that's not the heart of Jesus. Jesus loves all hundred. Jesus gave up every comfort to come reach wandering people in their place of need, to die for them, to be raised to life for them, and to call his people to join him in his ministry, to rise up in love, go out, and help him find the rest. It's not easy, but it's possible. Where are the people today? Most people hardly know their neighbors, but they do know people. They know them in their favorite coffee shop, in retail centers, at work, the restaurants, the bars, the gym and they know them through social networks. The avenues to reach people are still there, but they've changed. Now we have to go and find them. What if we've got it wrong? What if the stats are upside down? Could it be that we need to leave the one for the 99? Could it be that there might only be one righteous person to every 99 sinners who need to repent? What if we left the one for the 99?